Greetings, dear friends. Like many of you, we watched with shock yesterday as domestic terrorists broke into the Capitol building, assaulted police, and threatened lawmakers and their staff. With growing horror, we listened to our president incite and encourage the rioters. Like many of you, we are still trying to make sense of yesterday's events, which, in the blink of an eye, showed the worst of us to the world. In the Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus tells his followers that it is not what goes into a person, but what comes out of a person's mouth that defiles. Likewise, Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others. Our faith teaches us to be careful with our words because words have power. We can inspire or incite, delight or defile. We have a leader who has used his words to incite what happened in our capital yesterday. Four people are dead, numerous others injured and still more traumatized. The intent was clearly to cause chaos and injury, both through the storming of the Capitol and in the pipe bombs that were planted in locations around the city. Republicans and Democrats alike called on our president to use his words to defuse the situation. Instead, the president stoked the fire with his continued lies about the election and told the rioters, we love you, you're very special. Words have power. In this case, words have the power to hurt, divide, and destroy. The president's words leading up to and during the insurrection were in opposition to the life-affirming message of the good news of Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, thousands more Americans died from a pandemic in which our president's leadership has largely been absent in favor of incendiary tweets and lies about the election. It is time to use the power of our words in the way Jesus did, to affirm the goodness and dignity of every human being, to create loving communities, to bring people in from the cold, to nurture the power of life. We do not have to look far to find in both Republicans and Democrats examples of gospel-aligned leadership. In fact, each of us can be a source of Christ-like speech. What happened in our nation's capital did not start overnight. It was empowered, carefully nurtured over many weeks by more than one individual through the use of hateful speech and indulgent words. The damage from yesterday's events will likewise not be healed overnight. We are called as followers of the gospel to heal with Jesus's own words of love and dignity. Our words have the power to heal. Our words have the power to call for justice. As the congregation of the Church of the Holy Trinity, we are called to be a bright center of God's word in Rittenhouse Square and Center City. As your clergy, we will join with the vestry to lead this congregation in using the words of Jesus Christ to affirm life and justice and to speak out against the devastating effects of white supremacy in our nation. Together, we will speak truth and healing through our outreach, our worship, and our fellowship to Center City and beyond. May God bless you and speak his word to you and through you.